Hello everyone, let's talk about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. If you have been following the growth and development of African countries, you probably must have heard about the Grand Renaissance Dam. So in the video, I will tell you everything you need to know about this monstrous project, from cost to execution and capacity. So if you are in for that, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. The Inception of the Dam the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is a hydroelectric dam project on the Blue Nile River, located in the Benishangul Gumus region of Ethiopia. The idea for the project originated in the early 20th century, with the first feasibility study conducted in 1964. However, the project did not gain much traction until the 2000s when Ethiopia began to prioritize infrastructure development and renewable energy production. On 31 March 2011, the project was made public and the contract was awarded without competitive bidding to Italian company Salini Impregillo, now known as We Build. The dam's foundation stone was laid on 2 April 2011 by Prime Minister Melz Zainawi. A rock-crushing plant was constructed, along with a small airstrip for fast transportation. The expectation was for the first two power generation turbines to become operational after 44 months of construction, or in early 2015. The dam is a massive infrastructure project with a height of 175 meters, a length of 1.8 kilometers, and a total capacity of 74 billion cubic meters. The JIRD is expected to generate 6,000 megawatts of electricity making it the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa and the seventh largest in the world. The JIRD aims to provide Ethiopia with a reliable source of renewable energy, reduce dependence on fossil fuels, and contribute to the country's economic development. Ethiopia has one of the lowest rates of electrification in the world, with only 44% of the population having access to electricity. The JIRD is expected to increase the country's electricity generation capacity by a significant margin, providing access to electricity for millions of Ethiopians. In addition to electricity generation, this dam also aims to provide irrigation to 500,000 hectares of land, allowing for increased agricultural production and food security in the region. The dam's reservoir will also provide opportunities for fishing and tourism, which could generate additional income for the region. Cost, Financing, Design, and Execution The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is estimated to cost close to 5 billion U.S. dollars, about 7% of the 2016 Ethiopian Gross National Product. The lack of international financing for projects on the Blue Nile River has persistently been attributed to Egypt's campaign to keep control of the Nile water share. Ethiopia has been forced to finance the dam with crowdfunding through internal fundraising in the form of selling bonds and persuading employees to contribute a portion of their incomes. Contributions are made on the new official website confirmed by the verified account of the Office of the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Of the total cost, $1 billion US dollars for turbines and electrical equipment were funded by the Exim Bank of China. The design changed several times between 2011 and 2019. This affected both the electrical parameters and the storage parameters. Originally, in 2011, the hydropower plant was to receive 15 generating units with 350 megawatts nameplate capacity each, resulting in a total installed capacity of 5,250 megawatts with an expected power generation of 15,128 gigawatt hours per year. Its planned generation capacity was later increased to 6,000 megawatts through 16 generating units with 375 megawatts nominal capacity each. The expected power generation was estimated at 15,692 gigawatt hours per year. In 2017, the design was again changed to add another 450 megawatts for a total of 6,450 megawatts with a planned power generation of 16,153 gigawatt hours per year. That was achieved by upgrading 14 of the 16 generating units from 375 megawatts to 400 megawatts without changing the nominal capacity. According to a senior Ethiopian official, on 17 October 2019, the power generation capacity of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is now 5,150 megawatts, 
with 13 turbines down from 16 turbines. The main contractor is the Italian company we built, formerly Salini Impregillo, which also served as the primary contractor for the Gilgil Gibe II, Gilgil Gibe III, and Tanabella's dams. Seaman New Bekele was the project manager of Jurd from the start of construction in 2011 up to his death on 26 July 2018. In October same year, he was replaced by Kifo Horo. The dam is expected to require 10 million cubic meters of concrete. The government has pledged to use only domestically produced concrete. In March 2012, Salini awarded the Italian firm Trados Cavi Spe, a contract to supply low and high voltage cable for the dam. Alstom will provide the eight 375 megawatts of Francis turbines for the project's first phase at a cost of 250 million euros. As of April 2013, nearly 32% of the project was complete. Site excavation and some concrete placement were underway. One concrete batch plant has been completed with another under construction. Diversion of the Blue Nile was completed on 28 May 2013 and marked by a ceremony on the same day, in October 2019. The work was approximately 70% complete. As of March 2020, the steelworks reached 35% complete, civil works are 87% complete, while electromechanical works are 17% complete. To attain a total of 71% construction complete, according to Bileshu Kassa, project deputy director. On 26 June 2020, Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia agreed to delay filling the reservoir for a few weeks. On 21 July 2020, Ethiopian Prime Minister, Abi Ahmed, announced that the first phase of filling the reservoir had been completed. The early filling was attributed to heavy rains. In his statement, Abi stated that we have successfully completed the first dam filling without bothering and hurting anyone else. Now the dam is overflowing downstream. The target for the first year of filling was 4.9 cubic kilometers, while the dam has the capacity to hold 74 cubic kilometers when completed. The first phase of filling the reservoir began in July 2020 to a maximum depth of 70 meters utilizing a temporary sill. Further construction work is necessary before the reservoir can be filled to a level for electricity generation. The second phase of filling of the Jurd Reservoir was completed on 19 July 2021 with estimates of reaching the level of 573 meters and retaining no more than 4.5 cubic kilometers at this stage. In February 2021, the Ethiopian Minister of Water and Irrigation, Selashi Bekele, mentioned that the engineering work in constructing the dam reached 91%, while the total construction rate was 78.3%. In May 2021, Minister of Water and Irrigation Selashi Bekele mentioned that 80% of the dam construction was complete. Controversy surrounding the project The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has been a source of controversy since its inception, primarily due to concerns over its potential impact on water resources in the region. The Nile River is a shared resource with Egypt and Sudan heavily dependent on it for irrigation hydropower generation, and domestic water supply. Both countries have raised concerns that the project could reduce their share of the water, negatively impacting their agricultural production, energy generation, and public health. Egypt has been particularly vocal in its opposition to the project, with officials expressing concerns over the dam's potential impact on the country's water supply and national security. Egypt has called for a more extended filling period for the dam, which would minimize the impact on downstream countries and allow time for further negotiations. Sudan has been more supportive of the project, but officials have still expressed concerns over the potential impact on their water resources. Sudan has called for a mechanism to manage the water flow from the dam during periods of drought or low flow. Ethiopia has emphasized its right to use the Nile River's resources for its development and economic growth, but the country has also expressed a willingness to negotiate with downstream countries to find a mutually beneficial solution. The negotiations between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan have been ongoing for several years, with various rounds of talks held under the auspices of the African Union. However, a final agreement has yet to be reached, 
and the controversy surrounding the project has raised concerns over the potential for conflict in the region. The project has also been the subject of geopolitical tensions, with some countries accusing Ethiopia of using the project to gain political leverage in the region. Egypt has called for international mediation to resolve the dispute, while Ethiopia has insisted on African Union-led negotiations. In addition to concerns over water resources, there have also been environmental and social concerns raised about the dam's impact on the local ecosystem and communities. The construction of the dam has led to the displacement of thousands of people, with some reports of human rights violations and forced evictions. The dam's impact on downstream countries and the environment highlights the need for effective communication and cooperation between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan to ensure that the project's benefits are shared equitably and that any potential negative impacts are minimized. The African Union has a crucial role to play in facilitating these negotiations and finding a resolution that promotes regional cooperation and stability. Ultimately, the dam's success will depend on the ability of all parties involved to find a mutually beneficial solution that takes into account the interests of all stakeholders. In conclusion, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is a significant infrastructure project with the potential to transform Ethiopia's economy and improve the lives of millions of people in the region. However, the controversy surrounding the project highlights the need for effective communication and cooperation between the countries involved to ensure that the project's benefits are shared equitably and that any potential negative impacts are minimized. The Grand Renaissance Dam is a symbol of Ethiopia's aspirations for modernization and progress, but it must also take into account the concerns and interests of its neighbors to promote regional stability and cooperation. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more entertaining videos.